For hundreds of years, cattlemen and ranchers have used the sound of a whip to move cattle. Nowadays, most whips are used by performing artists in competitive sports and by whip-cracking enthusiasts around the world. Today, we'll be having a look at how a kangaroo leather bullwhip is made by Johnny Ogren over at Witchcraft Whips. First, the whip is designed on paper. At this stage, it is important for the maker to have a clear picture of the finished whip in mind. Different characteristics of the whip calls for slightly different designs. A piece of steel for the handle is selected and cut to length. One end of the handle is ground down to accommodate the core that will be attached to it later. Once the handle foundation is prepared, the leather for the whip is selected. As kangaroos live their lives in the wild, scars and other blemishes are common. All hides used to build your whip are hand-picked first grade leather that's been inspected several times, but only the best of the very best are chosen for the overlay. A core consisting of two triangular shaped pieces of leather are cut, attached to the handle, and conditioned. The hide for the bellies are trimmed and rounded off. The strands for the first belly are cut, stretched, resized, and beveled before they are attached to the handle. The first belly is braided over the handle and the core. When finished, the belly will be rolled to make it smooth. After the rolling, the strands from the belly will be cut and tapered to serve as the core for the next layer of braiding and to provide the correct shape of the finished whip. Artificial sinew is wrapped around the end of the handle and onto the end of the thong. This is done to prevent the steel handle from rubbing against and damaging the leather, but also to provide a smooth transition from the solid handle to the flexible thong. After that, the binding at the transition area is rolled. Next, a long triangular piece of vegetable tan leather known as a bolster is cut and heavily greased before it's attached over the first belly. The bolster's job is to serve as a grease reservoir, keeping the leather in the center of the whip in prime condition. In addition to that, it adds a bit of weight, fills in any tiny air pockets, and provides a nice smooth surface for the next layer of braiding. The bolster is also lightly rolled. Strands for the second belly are then prepared. Just like the previous layer of braiding, they're cut, stretched, and resized to their correct width and beveled. The second belly is then braided in a similar fashion as the first, but this time extending a bit further down the thong. It is then rolled before receiving another light binding at the transition area. After the transition has been rolled, a second bolster is cut to fit the increasing diameter of the whip. Just like the previous one, the bolster is heavily greased, attached over the belly, and rolled again. Strands for the overlay are cut, stretched, resized, and beveled, but this time from the selected overlay hide. Patterns can be incorporated into the braid, a technique referred to as fancy plaiting. These patterns are worked out on paper and can range from very advanced and complex decorations to subtle and elegant changes in the braid.
The overlay on this whip started out with 16 strands that were 5.3 millimeters wide. Along the thong, the strands have been tapered and some dropped into the braid to accommodate the decreasing diameter. At the end of the thong, we're left with eight strands at three millimeters. Being a six foot whip, the overlay is braided to the six foot mark where the fall is hitched on. Once the strand ends have been trimmed, the full sized whip receives a final rolling. Knot foundations are formed and attached to the transition and the heel of the whip. Depending on the style, weight, and action of the whip, a couple of strips of lead might be incorporated into the heel knot to balance the whip, making it more comfortable for the user. These foundations are then covered with Turk's head knots. The heel knot serves as the grip when the whip is being cracked, so it needs to be comfortable and smooth. The transition knot, however, is purely a decorative element without practical purposes. The whip is strung up and receives a coat of shellac. The shellac will provide a nice sheen to the finished whip. Once the shellac is dry, the entire whip is gently polished with a clean cloth and receives a light coat of conditioner. After that, a cracker is attached to the end of the fall, and the whip is left overnight to rest in a coil. During the night, the quite stiff whip will learn to accept its coiled shape. This will also form the natural curvature of the whip. The next day, the whip will be brought out and test cracked to ensure that it performs the way it is supposed to. You should never have to muscle a whip to get it to crack. If done properly, the whip should do the job for you. Every whip is tested to see that they will crack with minimal effort. This whip seems to meet the criteria and is ready to be shipped to its awaiting owner. And that is how your whip is made.